Welcome back to Turner Classic Movies. I'm Dave Carger. In a few hours, we'll get to see Dean Martin give a powerful and unexpected dramatic performance alongside John Wayne in the 1959 Western Rio Bravo. But first, to gear up for it, we have a documentary from 2021 that celebrates Martin's life and career. Its very appropriate title is King of Cool. Throughout his successful six decades as a singer and actor in New York, Hollywood, and Las Vegas, Dean Martin epitomized sophistication with a refreshing laid-back twist and a drink in his hand. He appeared in 57 movies, starred in hundreds of TV episodes, including having his own Emmy-winning variety show from 1965 to 1974, and recorded dozens of albums that included multiple top 10 hits. Although we all know Dean Martin through his radio shows, films, TV appearances, or recordings like That's Amore, the man himself was somewhat of a mystery. The documentary you're about to see does not attempt to solve that mystery at all. Instead of focusing on facts and what is or isn't knowable, director Tom Donahue set out to understand the mellow-voiced man behind the music with this nuanced portrait of the performer. Ever since Dean Martin came onto the scene, few words have described him more accurately than cool, but he didn't need a publicity agent to give him that nickname. According to Martin's daughter, Dina, a great friend to TCM, when she was introduced to Elvis Presley in the early 60s, he leaned in and told her, they call me the king of rock and roll, but your dad, he's the king of cool. That sentiment is the main thread running through Donahue's film, how Martin was beloved across generations. And in case seeing and hearing him perform isn't enough to convince you, several of his contemporaries are also gathered here to explain why Martin has always been well worth remembering, including Angie Dickinson, Bob Newhart, Norman Lear, and Martin's legendary comedy partner, Jerry Lewis. From 2021, this is Dean Martin, King of Cool. King of Cool was directed by Tom Donahue, who assembled that wonderful roster of stars and filmmakers to talk about their memories of Dean Martin, including Jerry Lewis, who had begun his career as Martin's comedy partner in the mid-1940s. In an interview with Film Talk Weekly, Tom Donahue spoke about making King of Cool. He mentioned that his favorite quote about Dean Martin came from Josh Homme, of the rock band Queens of the Stone Age, who told him, when I hear Dean sing, I hear Dean smiling. Donahue loved that description, and it fits well with all accounts of Martin's personality. In her book, Martin's daughter, Dina Martin, wrote, memories are made of this. She explained how her father had a unique aura about him, adding, when people speak of meeting him, they don't talk about what he did or even what songs he sang, but about how he made them feel. Just being in his presence was enough. Up next, Dean Martin stars alongside John Wayne in a landmark Western from 1959, directed by Howard Hawks. Next on TCM, Rio Bravo, then Triple Cross, and later, The Fisher King. TCM reels you in today. Hello, I'm Dave Carger. Thanks for spending your Saturday with me here on TCM. We just presented a 2021 documentary about Dean Martin called King of Cool. And up next is a film that proved to everyone that Dean Martin was capable of a lot more than singing and playing light comedy. From 1959, directed by Howard Hawks, it's Rio Bravo. This dramatic Western takes place in a small Texas town. And the story begins when the sheriff, played by John Wayne, arrests the brother of a powerful and corrupt rancher. With the help of his drunken deputy, played by Dean Martin, as well as an older deputy, played by Walter Brennan, and a young gunfighter, played by Ricky Nelson, Wayne sets out to hold off the rancher's gang and bring the men to justice. Howard Hawks made Rio Bravo as a direct response to another Western produced earlier in the decade, High Noon, directed by Fred Zinneman. Hawks took issue with that movie, specifically Gary Cooper's character in the film. According to Hawks, Cooper played a sheriff who was so afraid of his adversaries that he spent much of the film asking the local townspeople for help. Howard Hawks and John Wayne felt that a frontier professional would never seek help from the people he was assigned to protect. He would only accept assistance from those who were skilled enough to handle the job. Working from a short story written by his daughter, Barbara Hawks McCampbell, Howard Hawks developed a film that offered a different kind of sheriff, and he had just one actor in mind for that role, John Wayne. To entice younger audiences, he also cast the popular teen idol, Ricky Nelson, as the third lead in the film, and the cast also includes Angie Dickinson and Ward Bond in his last major movie role. 
But when the film premiered, it was Dean Martin who stunned critics and audiences with his performance. Although Martin had recently appeared in a few dramas, nobody expected such a powerful performance from the popular singer who had become famous in movies as Jerry Lewis's comedy partner. Here from 1959, in a 2023 4K restoration from Warner Brothers and the Film Foundation, here is Rio Bravo. Rio Bravo reunited John Wayne with director Howard Hawks a decade after they made their first picture together, another landmark western, Red River, from 1948. John Ford famously said that he didn't even know that Wayne could act until he saw him perform under Hawks' direction in Red River. As I said before the film, Rio Bravo was Hawks and Wayne's second collaboration, and they went on to make three more movies together, including two that were inspired by Rio Bravo, El Dorado from 1967, and Hawks' final film, Rio Lobo, which was released in 1970. At the 1975 Academy Awards ceremony, after working in Hollywood for five decades, Howard Hawks finally received the first and only Oscar of his career. It was an honorary award, and it was presented to him by his good friend, John Wayne. Up next, we're switching gears for a World War II spy drama from 1966, starring Christopher Plummer. Next on TCM, Triple Cross, then The Fisher King, and later, Synecdoche, New York. Take two with Patty Jenkins, tonight.